Anyone who can tell me what consistency is? Anyone? Okay. okay, consistency means firm, steady, balanced, acting or done the same way over time, and um, easily, not easily changed or affected over time. So, uh, as quoted by John C. Maxwell and the Fix the Fifth Law, motivation gets you going and discipline keeps you going. We shall identify the two important keywords. Um, motivation and discipline. Motivation is the reason or reasons for doing something, both internal and external factors that stimulate desire and energy in people to be continually interested and committed to a job and is eager to be involved in it or make an effort to accomplish or achieve it. Discipline means controlling your behavior and action, obeying rules or opposing behavior through self-motivation or through teaching or punishment. Short, in short, um, strictness. If you have discipline, you have self-control. If you want to, um, if you want to become more disciplined and consistent in your performance, you need to become more disciplined and consistent in your growth. So how can you do that? Well, there are four steps or four questions on how to grow in consistency by knowing the what, how, why, and when of personal goals. What you need to improve, how you're supposed to improve, why you want to keep improving, and when you're supposed to improve. So firstly, do you know what you need? Oh wait, 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 wait. Yes, I speak so fast. Of their own. 
own growth. So choose how you will grow and stick with it. Next, and the most fun-loving among all the personality types is sanguine. They are often the life of the party. They are very positive and uh, they're very positive and optimistic. But their weakness is lack of focus. If you're a sanguine, since you are, since you enjoy being positive and fun, you can motivate yourself by making a game of it. For example, um, giving yourself giving yourself rewards for incremental successes. Finally, the last personality type is phlegmatic. People with this personality are very easygoing, likable, calm, and not very excited. They're just a little bit dull in expressing their feelings or showing emotions. Their weakness is inertia. Inertia means lack of interest or unwillingness to do to make an effort to do something. It's a tendency to do nothing and remain in change. If you're a phlegmatic, you can motivate yourself by finding the value in what you need to do. But phlegmatic can be one of the most stubborn in all the personality types. So do you know what your personality type is yet? If you're wondering, I am 100% melancholy. And number two, start with the simple stuff. The number one problem that beginners tend to have is attempting too much. Thus, the result is discouragement. When you attempt too much too soon, you're almost guaranteed to fall short of your desired result. The secret to building motivational momentum is to start small with the simple stuff. Begin by setting goals that are worthwhile but highly achievable. Master the basics, then practice them every day without fail. Small discipline repeated with consistency every day leads to great achievements gained slowly over time. It creates an easy way to make progress doing something simple day by day. So since it requires some time to grow gradually, the next thing you need is patience. Number three, be patient. I, I'm pretty sure that most of us have one thing in common, and that is that one of our greatest weaknesses is impatience. <clears throat> Everything we want to do takes longer than we anticipate. However, don't use the excuse of failing or losing motivation. Be patient, keep trying, don't give up. Most people never realize how close they are to achieving something significant because they give up way too soon. Quoted by Sadie, have patience, all things are difficult before they become easy. Meaning, nothing is easy, but once you've mastered it, it becomes easy. For example, math. Uh, before learning a formula, you might say or think that it's, it's hard, it's difficult because you haven't understood it, but once you've learned it and practiced doing it a lot of time over and over again, then you know how to solve it and it becomes easy. So remember that everything worthwhile in life takes dedication and time. The, uh, the, people who, the people who grow and achieve the most are the ones who harness the power of patience and persistence. The, first, the fourth thing that is suggested by John C. Maxwell is to value the process. It is going to take a long time, so you might as well just enjoy the journey. Bear in mind that life goals are reached by setting annual goals. Annual goals are reached by reaching daily goals. Daily goals are reached by doing things which may be uncomfortable at first, but eventually become habits. Habits are powerful things. Habits turn actions into attitudes, and attitudes into lifestyle. If you value today and find a way to enjoy it, you will invest in today. And the steps you take today will lead to bigger steps you will take someday. Daily goals pave the path to direction change, which will construct the road to total life change. <coughs> so the next question is, do you know why you want to keep improving? This is the question of your own motives and life purpose. Knowing what to improve, how to improve, is critical to consistency and personal growth. But why is what keeps you motivated along the journey? Having a strong why will help keep you growing when the discipline of learning becomes difficult discouraging or tedious. If your growth is connected to your value, dreams, or purpose, you'll know why you're doing it. And you will be more likely to follow through. Take the why test, and your, answer to, and your answers to the following questions will let you know if your why is solid enough to motivate you to consistently grow. So one, do you constantly procrastinate on important tasks? Yes or no? And two, do you require coaching to do small chores? Uh, and three, do you do you perform duties just to get by? Four, do you constantly talk negatively about your work? Five, do you do effort of friends to encourage you, irritate you instead? Six, do you start small projects and abandon them? Seven, do you avoid self-improvement opportunities? If you answer yes to many 
of these questions, your why isn't strong enough or big enough to keep you going yet. <clears throat> the more, <laughs> you have to give yourself more and bigger whys to, so you can keep on wanting to, so you can keep on wanting to put in the effort to grow. The more valid reason you have to achieve your dream, the, the higher the odds are that you grow. The more, the greater number of reasons you give yourself to grow, the more likely you will be to follow through. So lastly, do you know when you're supposed to improve? The first obvious reason is right now, today, at this precise moment. Life change must occur every day, and you need today to be here every day. If you don't start today, next year you will regret that you didn't start today. So act, uh, wait, okay. Yeah, you will regret that you didn't start today. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. That means developing great habits. So ask yourself, what are you doing daily that needs to change?